Join me today as we dive deep into the intricate physics of car crashes and their potential repercussions on the human brain and body. Unraveling the complex dance of force, time, velocity, and motion, we'll explore how even low velocity impacts can lead to severe injuries, especially to the delicate structures of the brain. Discover with me the paradoxical roles of the brain's protective structures, which during accident themselves can lead to brain injuries instead of protecting the brain. This can drastically alter outcomes after injuries. We're gonna draw a bridge between momentum and medicine and take a comprehensive look at vehicular and brain biomechanics. So whether you're a driver, passenger, or you're curious about this, join me in unveiling the science between every turn, stop, and motor vehicle collision on the road. We're gonna discuss the physics of brain injury, force, time, and motion in motor vehicle accidents. We'll dive into the intricate physics of car crashes and the potential repercussions on the human brain and body. Unraveling the complex dance of force, time, velocity, and motion, we'll explore even low velocity impacts and how that can lead to brain injuries, sometimes very significant, tearing the delicate structures of the human brain. We'll discuss the paradoxical roles of what normally would be built-in protective structures in the brain, which during accidents can aggravate injury to the brain. And we'll discuss why even even subtle changes in head positioning at the time of impact can drastically alter brain injury outcomes. We're going to draw a bridge between momentum and medicine and dive deep into some of the biomechanics. So join me and let's get started. Navigating the roads, whether as a driver or passenger, it's often easy for us to overlook the intricate physics involved with motor vehicle collisions. Now at the heart of motor vehicle safety and the consequences of accidents are fundamental principles of physics and mechanics. More specifically, the interplay between the physics of force, time, velocity, and motion. So again, how does a seemingly minor, what we call a fender bender, have the potential to cause significant brain injury? Why are certain crashes more detrimental than others, even at similar speeds? Why does rotation of the head in an injury change the damage which the brain may suffer? To answer these questions and understand the profound implications for brain health and safety, we must dive into the dynamics of momentum, force, velocity, and the pivotal role of time in determining the impact of these forces on the human brain. In addition, for those who stay with me until the end of this video, I've got a special and an important area to discuss. It's a question and a topic which is often asked of me, and that is, why might someone suffer a significant brain injury after what appears to be a low velocity impact? I'll go into some of the physics behind that and after that, I think you'll have a better idea of the physics of forces involved with collisions and how this impacts the brain. Before discussing that last topic, we're gonna to discuss the following areas. First, force vectors, which may impact the brain. Translational forces, rotational, shearing, compressive, and distractive forces. We'll discuss that in detail. Next, post-motor vehicle crash assessment. When to seek medical attention. Third, what happens to the brain during a collision? And why does it happen? Fourth, head position during a crash. Why that may affect the brain and complex vectors of force that may impact the brain during an injury. And fifth, the topic of the physics of momentum, force, velocity, time, and impulse in low velocity impacts. Welcome back everyone. I'm Dr. Gary Krauss, neurosurgeon and founder of the Krauss TBI Institute in Houston, Texas. On the Krauss TBI video podcast, we're dedicated to bringing knowledge about the brain, brain health, and traumatic brain injury. I must remind everyone that this video is for educational purposes, so for personal individual health care, please contact a physician. Now, let's get started and dive into what happens during a motor vehicle collision. During a collision, the brain and body may be subject to a variety of forces, which may cause significant damage. The nature of these depends on the vectors of the forces. And this can include translational forces, rotational, shearing forces, compressive, and distractive forces. Now let's discuss each of these and see what each of these actually mean. First, translational force. This is the force that moves the head forward, backward, or from side to side. As the car impacts, the head may be jolted forward, then whipped backward, then Sudden and rapid motion can cause the brain to slam against the inner walls of the skull, leading to bruising or bleeding in the brain. Next, rotational force. The head doesn't just move straight back and forth. 
It also rotates or twists. This twisting motion can be dangerous to the brain. As the brain rotates inside the skull, it can twist or tear the delicate neural structures and blood vessels, leading to diffuse axonal injury, a severe form of brain damage. The brain not only slams into the hard skull, but it may also slam into the firm dural membranes, which are inside the skull, known as the falx cerebri and the tentorium cerebelli, which function to separate lobes of the brain. And we'll discuss that a bit more later. The next force, a shearing force. As the brain is violently rocked, different parts of the brain move at different speeds. This results in a shearing force where neurons and their connections can stretch and tear, disrupting communication between different parts of the brain. The next force, compressive force. At the moment of impact, there's a sudden compression as the brain is pressed against the skull. This can lead to contusions, which are essentially bruises on the brain, as well as other areas of damage to the brain. And the next force is a distractive force. On the rebound from the compression, the brain can pull away from its anchoring structures, leading to potential strains or tears in the brain's tissue. Now, let's not forget what's just below the head, the neck. The neck can bear the brunt of these forces as well. As the head whips forward and backward, the cervical spine can be subjected to extreme stress, leading to potential disc injuries, fractures, or other cervical injuries. The rest of the body isn't spared either. Chests may slam against seat belts, leading to potential rib fractures or internal organ uh, injuries. Knees might hit the dashboard. And legs or arms can be thrown against the car's interior, resulting in fractures or sprains. The next topic I'd like to go over, post-motor vehicle crash assessment, when to seek medical attention. After a car crash, even if you feel fine initially, it's crucial to monitor for any signs of change. Just the adrenaline surge alone during events can mask pain and symptoms. Here's what you should be aware of. First, traumatic brain injury, or TBI as we call it, symptoms. Symptoms often seen after a TBI. First, immediate symptoms. Loss of consciousness, confusion, disorientation, forgetfulness, sometimes known as post-traumatic amnesia, or dizziness. Second, cognitive symptoms. Difficulty thinking, memory problems, attention deficits, mood swings, or feeling in a fog. Next, physical symptoms. These can be headache, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, sleep pattern changes, dizziness, blurred vision. Next, sensory symptoms. Sensitivity to light or sound, ringing in the ears, or just even an altered taste or smell. And last, emotional symptoms. that can be irritability, depression, anxiety, or mood swings. If you notice any of these symptoms, especially loss of consciousness, persistent headaches, or repeated vomiting, it's vital to see a doctor immediately, preferably in an emergency room setting. These might indicate a concussion, contusion, or other forms of traumatic brain injury. Other bodily injuries can also occur. Let's go over a few. First, neck and spine. There might be pain, stiffness, reduced range of motion of the neck or spine, signs of paralysis, numbness, weakness. The limbs might be affected with these uh, findings as well. These can indicate a serious spinal injury. Next, second, chest problems. There might be pain or tightness, which could suggest rib fractures or internal injuries. There could be difficulty breathing. Certainly, that warrants immediate attention. Next, third, abdominal injuries. There might be tenderness, pain, or swelling. Those may hint at internal bleeding or organ damage. Next, fourth, there may be injury to the limbs. There might be swelling, a deformity of the limb, inability to move a limb. Those may be indicative of fractures. Next, I'd like to go over when is the right time to seek medical attention? It's critical to go to emergency room if there's any loss of consciousness, severe pain, difficulty breathing, paralysis, or other signs of a head injury. Then it's best to go to the emergency room and be evaluated. Second, it may be okay to see a doctor for symptoms that are less severe, such as persistent pain, stiffness, or any other of the TBI symptoms which we discussed. I'd recommend certainly seeing a doctor within 24 hours. It's better to be safe and to rule out any hidden injuries. Better to err on the side of safety and caution. Now remember, injuries from a car crash may not manifest immediately. It might be hours, days, even weeks before symptoms appear. Always prioritize your health and seek medical attention if anything feels off. Again, it's better to err on the side of caution when it comes to potential injuries. Remember, please, 
Traumatic brain injuries may lead to long-term cognitive, emotional, and physical impairments. It's best to be evaluated by medical professionals. Next topic that I'd like to discuss. What happens to the brain during a collision and why does it happen? So the brain is essentially three pounds of tissue or flesh floating in spinal fluid, which is much like water. How, and this is housed in a hard box, which we know as a skull. The brain contains about 100 billion nerve cells or neurons, about 100 billion white matter cells, which are connecting and insulating, about 170 trillion, that's 170 trillion connections or synapses, and thousands of synapses per neuron. It has massive amounts of white matter connections, and damage to the white matter connections or to the nerve cells can have profound effects on brain function. Now, the brain has two different sides, known as hemispheres, and these have connections between them. Now, the largest of these connections is known as the corpus callosum. It has about 200 to 250 million nerve fibers running through it. This connects one side to the other, so the two sides of the brain can talk. The two sides of the brain are separated also by a firm structure known as the falx cerebri. And the top of the brain and the bottom of the brain are also separated by another firm structure known as the tentorium cerebelli. Now, the names of these structures is not important. But what is important is knowing that while these structures help normally to support and protect the brain during daily activity, that during a traumatic event to the brain, they can do the opposite and add or lead to additional harm to the brain. To clarify, the falx cerebri and the tentorium are two critical structures within the cranial cavity. While they typically serve to support and protect the brain under high forces of a car crash, their roles can paradoxically contribute to injury. Now I'm showing a model of the brain here. And I'd like to go over uh, just a few basic structures. So this is the left side of the brain, what we call the left hemisphere. This is the front of the brain, and this is the back of the brain. Now we're looking at the brain from the uh, middle of the brain. We can see here, this is the corpus callosum. So this is the largest white matter tract that connects the two hemispheres of the brain, about 200, 250 million fibers and sometimes is damaged through uh, brain injury. And here is the brain stem. So the brain stem is important for basic vital components of uh, life, keeping us awake versus being in a coma, controlling heartbeat, breathing, some basic critical functions of the body. Now to understand brain injury, as we say, the brain is about three pounds and it's sitting in spinal fluid so it's basically floating in water inside the box known as the skull. But during an injury, we may have rotational shearing forces. Parts of the brain may slam into the skull, slam into the membranes such as the falx and the tentorium separating the lobes. So this soft brain tissue is susceptible certainly to significant injury during trauma of a motor vehicle collision. The falx cerebri is a strong arch folded section of dura mater covering of the brain and it descends vertically in what's known as the longitudinal fissure. Not critical to know that name but it is important to know that this firm structure separates the two hemispheres of the brain. In the event of a rapid translational and rotational force such as that experienced during a head-on collision, the brain might experience not just a movement forward and backward but also if the head is rotated, might have rotational component. The front of the brain may slam into the skull, but other portions of the brain may also slam into the firm dural structures that separate the two hemispheres. This movement can lead to tearing of brain tissue, particularly for the delicate structures that are adjacent to this rigid membrane, which we call the falx. Next, let's discuss the tentorium and brain injury. The tentorium is another dural fold, a firm membrane that separates the cerebrum or the top of the brain from the cerebellum, which is the bottom of the brain. And it forms kind of a tent over this area and that's why it's called tentorium. Normally, these firm structures within the skull are meant to compartmentalize and protect the brain. But when there's a car crash or motor vehicle collision, the shear and translational forces involved in the injury can shift these structures from being uh, protectors of the brain to contributing to injury of the brain. And that's because, as we said, the movement of the brain may cause the brain to slam into these firm membranes, causing translational and rotational 
traction, and injury to the brain, which itself can exacerbate the extent of traumatic brain injuries. Next, I'd like to discuss head position and the complex vectors of force that are in play during an injury. When there is a variation in head position during an injury, such as a rotation to one side at the moment of impact or to the other side, the vectors of force that affect the brain will change accordingly. So in a pure head-on collision, the vectors of force are front to back. But if the head is rotated, the expected front to back straightforward linear impact becomes altered and instead the brain would slam not just into the front of the skull, but in a much more complex manner because it has a much more complex vector of force applied to it. So the vector of force in this situation may now also be diagonal and as a result, the frontolateral portion or the side of the uh, brain towards the front may hit part of the skull. But in addition, the opposite hemisphere may propel and be thrust against that folk cerebri, that membrane that's separating the two hemispheres of the brain. This means that what would have been predominantly a linear force in a more straightforward head-on collision now can have also a pronounced rotational component due to the head's rotation at the moment of a head-on collision. As we said, this rotational component can significantly complicate the biomechanics of the injury. And it not only increases the risk of direct contusion on the brain's lateral aspect, but also elevates the risk of shearing injuries due to the brain's rotation. As the brain moves in this oblique manner, different regions may move at different speeds, potentially leading to more widespread axonal damage in the brain. These complexities of the vectors of forces highlight the unpredictability of traumatic brain injuries in car crashes. Even subtle differences in head positioning can drastically change the nature and severity of the injury, which underscores the challenges which clinicians face when assessing and treating victims of motor vehicle accidents. Next, I'd like to discuss the physics of momentum, force, time, velocity, and impulse, and how they impact low velocity impacts on traumatic brain injury. So I'm often asked the following question, how can the brain suffer significant damage from what appears to be a low velocity impact? To understand the answer to this, we have to go into a bit of physics. Now don't be concerned about the details, but rather focus on the final equation and what it means to the brain during a collision. Now we know from Newton's second law that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now if we multiply both sides of the equation by time, we arrive at the equation force times time equals mass times the change in velocity, which is also called momentum. The effect of this force over time is also called an impulse. Now it's important to remember that the force times the change in time is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. So in the context of a motor vehicle collision, the change in time and velocity would refer to how long it took the car or the person or the brain to go from traveling at the velocity it was traveling before the impact to a velocity of essentially zero or no velocity after the impact. In other words, how long it took for the impact to stop the motion. Let's examine the equation from this perspective. If we multiply the mass of an object, whether that be the brain alone or the car, and we multiply that by the velocity at which that object, the brain or the car is traveling, that gives us the momentum of that object. Now, if we reduce the final velocity to zero, and come to a stop, the amount of force which must be applied to the object, whether it's to the brain or the car, is inversely proportional to the time which it took to stop that motion, to stop the object. The shorter the time interval during which the change in momentum occurred, the larger the force that must have been exerted to stop the object. Let's look at two examples. First, an egg that's dropped on a hard surface, and second, a motor vehicle collision. Now imagine if we drop an egg onto a two foot tall layer of feathers. The velocity of the falling egg will decrease to zero over a several second period of time. And that's because of the softness of the feathers. Because of this long time interval, the force on the egg will be relatively small and the egg is unlikely to break. Now, if we drop the same egg on a hard surface, the change in velocity of the egg happens over a fraction of a second and the egg is likely to break. This is due to the fact that since the time interval for the velocity of the egg to go to zero is extremely small, the force 
which must have been applied to it, was very large, causing the egg to fracture and break. Next, let's look at the scenario of a car crash. Even at low velocities, if the change in velocity happens over a very brief period of time, the force experienced can be significant. Now, here's why. Imagine two scenarios. First, a car gently coming to a stop over five seconds. And second, the same car hitting a solid wall and coming to a stop in one-tenth of a second. Now, in both cases, the change in momentum going from moving to stationary is the same. However, because the time taken for this change is drastically shorter in the second scenario, the force exerted is much higher. This principle is why even low velocity impacts can be dangerous to the brain and to the body. When we relate this to the human body inside the car, things become very concerning. In a sudden stop, the brain can continue moving while the skull has already stopped, causing the brain to slam into the inner walls of the skull and into the falcs and the tentorium. Even if the car's change in velocity is relatively small, such as in a low velocity impact, if that change happens abruptly, the force on the brain can be significant. This rapid deceleration can cause the brain to experience translational, rotational, shearing forces, and other forces, leading to potential traumatic brain injuries. So in summary, while velocity is an important factor, the time over which an object decelerates from its pre-injury speed to zero plays a crucial role in determining the force it experienced. Even in low velocity impacts, if the deceleration is sudden, the forces involved can be substantial enough to cause serious injuries, particularly to the delicate structures of the brain. Understanding the interplay of momentum, force, velocity, and time helps emphasize the potential dangers in even seemingly minor motor vehicle accidents. We can see why this force applied to the soft brain can result in significant damage. So in conclusion, what happens during a motor vehicle collision is governed by intricate physics. The principles which involve momentum, force, velocity, and time, which all play pivotal roles. A vehicle's momentum and the brain's momentum derived from its mass and velocity combined with the time over which it decelerates from its pre-injury speed and comes to a stop dictates the force exerted on the vehicle and on the brain during an accident. This force, even in low velocity impacts, can be profound if the deceleration is sudden and over a very brief period of time. Within the confines of a vehicle and the confines of the skull, the brain, despite its protective structures like the falks and the tentorium, is especially vulnerable. Sudden stops can cause the brain to undergo translational, rotational, shearing, and other forces. The position of the head during impact, even subtle rotations, can complicate injury vectors, leading to a range of traumatic brain injuries. Beyond the immediate aftermath of an accident, it's essential to monitor for signs of injury. Often, the rush of adrenaline can mask symptoms, making diligent observation crucial. Understanding the biomechanics underscores the significance of potentially severe consequences of what would be otherwise seemingly minor collisions. In the intricate dance of force, time, mass, velocity, and motion on the roads, a momentary traumatic injury can lead to complex biomechanical events with long-term repercussions for health and the brain. Recognizing the physics at play enhances our ability to diagnose and treat traumatic brain injury. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. But in addition, if you'd like to be part of our growing community and possibly participate with thoughts and ideas in future videos, please subscribe. Also, please leave your thoughts and suggestions below in the comments as they are very helpful for me to learn what your ideas are, your experiences, questions, and any concerns. Until I see you next time, thanks for watching and for being a part of our community.